Hello and welcome to Middle Age Geek Girl. I'm Sally. Today I will be doing a drill with me story time video. So I will be working on these awesome alien stickers that were sent to me from Everyday E Deals. And because they're alien and UFO themed, I will be doing a voiceover story time, which will be about the Westall UFO sighting here in Victoria. Now it happened about seven and a half years before I was born, but in an area not too far from where I grew up in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. I never knew about this story until a couple of years ago. So it'd be a good little story time to do that is appropriate for these stickers. So welcome to the voiceover. The information I have gathered for this story time has all come from my research via Wikipedia and a number of newspaper articles I found online. So to start with, the location where this sighting took place is in the Victorian suburb of Clayton South, which is approximately 20 kilometres southeast of the the Melbourne CBD, of course being Victoria, Australia. The date was Wednesday, April 6, 1966, and the time was around 11 a.m. It would have been autumn in Australia at that time, as we are in the Southern Hemisphere. Approximately 200 students and teachers from Westall High School, now called Westall Secondary College, were outside for sports day when up in the sky an odd shape was noticed. It was later described as a grey disc or saucer shaped craft with a slight purple hue and was about the size of two family cars. The object flew over the high school and descended out of view behind a row of trees. After an unspecified amount of time, the object reappeared, but was now being pursued by five aircraft, and it reportedly moved faster than when it was first sighted. A science teacher at the school described this scene as resembling a game of cat and mouse with what appeared to be a thin beam of light coming from the rear of the first craft and this game of cat and mouse lasted around 20 minutes until gradually the objects went out of view. It is reported that as soon as they were able, some students and the previously mentioned science teacher went towards the tree line that the craft initially disappeared behind and found the grass flattened where the object had most likely landed while it was out of view. This area is known as the Grange Reserve and it currently has UFO styled children's play equipment installed in recognition of the event which celebrated 56 years this April. Within 40 minutes of the original incident it was reported that armed forces personnel flooded the area and formed a security barrier around the Grange Reserve. In true alien conspiracy style, anyone who spoke to the local media were allegedly threatened by government officials and advised not to speak out anymore. The usual suspect was rolled out to explain away the sighting. You know it. We all know it. <laughs> A weather balloon. There was one reportedly launched from Laverton, which is 32 kilometres west-northwest of Westall. <laughs> the Age newspaper reported that the wind was blowing from the west on the 6th of April, and if it continued southeast near Clayton South, the balloon could have disappeared from view behind the row of trees very close to the siding time of 11 a.m., in regards to the second half of the sighting, as a reminder, the five aircraft chasing the original craft. 
The suggestion of Air Force training manoeuvres has been put forward, although none were recorded on any official documents. In conclusion, whether you believe it was a bona fide extraterrestrial craft or just a weather balloon, Royal Australian Air Force training exercises, some wild imaginations or group hallucination is completely up to you. So that was the story of the Westall UFO sighting that happened here in Victoria, Australia. As I mentioned at the beginning, I grew up in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, so I was not far from the event, but seven and a half years late for the event because I wasn't born until seven and a half years after it happened. Like I've spoken to my mum about it who grew up in the eastern suburbs as well and she'd never heard of it. So can't ask my dad, he wasn't in Australia then. But it's interesting, I only found out about it by chance from a friend from Perth a few years ago. So there you go. Even though I used to read a lot about aliens and UFOs when I was a kid, I had not heard of it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. It's something new for me. It's something I want to do every now and then is a drill with me or colour with me and a weird story on the theme of what I'm doing. So in this case, obviously, aliens and UFOs. Let's have a look at the finished product. That's the drills, all of the drills. There are eight colours and there are plenty of drills left over. Now, I must say I was really happy with these. These were all perfect. I did not throw out a single crystal rhinestone drill and normally you get a few that the foil hasn't worked on properly. I mean, I can see one there in the tray just looking at it, but I mean, that's the only one I've noticed. And yeah, I didn't have to throw out any whilst making the stickers. So these are all keepers for uses for other things. So I will have to put them away securely after filming, but I'll just move them out of frame. Okay, so here are the finished stickers. I'll see if I can zoom you in any closer whilst still keeping them in frame. There we go. There is a bit of glare out there, but I'll try and hold them up so that the glare doesn't happen too much. But it is, they're on shiny holographic paper, so they're really quite pretty. And I, th I just think they look adorable. And the colours are really quite vibrant. So that was the first set and that's the second set there. So they will go into my display book for a completed diamond painting project for the year. I haven't done many this year. I think I've only done about 13 or 14 so far. So thank you to everybody for watching. Let me know what you thought of this video. If you found it interesting, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And let me know if you didn't find it interesting, but let me know why not. Because <laughs> I like to know what people are thinking. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so you are up to date with when I have released my latest video. If you're interested in supporting the channel further, I do have a Ko-fi and a Patreon account set up and the details are up here on screen. But that will do it for this video. So everybody, no matter where you are, 
whether you be in a UFO or in a rocket or on a different planet, <laughs> stay safe, stay weird, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.